So uh, this is an interesting one here. Joe I am. Uh, the subject is Andrew Tess Martin at TNA. Peace and blessings. Hope you guys are doing great and staying healthy. Thanks for all the last of stories. D.I. and Conan. What, if any, what, if any, were your interactions like with Punisher Andrew Martin, better known as Test, when he arrived in TNA in 2007? What happened that his run was so short in TNA? It seemed like he was only there a few weeks and did nothing that really stood out. Remember seeing him on TV during his first appearance, looking like a gassed up Eminem and did not look at all healthy in the face. Can't say that was ever a testicle, but did, damn it if that guy didn't have the best big boot in the business I've ever seen. I was so excited for him when he was with TNA and seemed to be poised for a big push. The shame he never beat his demons and left us too early at the age of 33. Any memories of notable interactions you might recall? Thanks for reading my questions and go Lakers. Jeez, um, I barely knew Tess. I'd met him a couple times. 33 when he passed away. Yeah. Holy I'd God. met him a few times. It was always cool, right? Um, I can't remember if he was in TNA when I was there. Maybe like he might have been. I, was, I don't know um, if I was there. It was like 2007 or 2008. When yeah. were you there, Nick? I started in the beginning of 09, so it must have okay. been. Okay. All right. So, but I will say this. I remember, so Bully Ray and Nash were both very good friends of him, his, right? And I remember that he was having problems because Bully Ray and Nash were always talking about, you know, that we'd be in a conversation, be the three of us. We'd say, he'd, they'd be talking about Tessa. He's, he's messed up on pills. They yeah. call him on the phone. He could, barely, he, could, he could barely make his way through a sentence to the point that I was in conversation you know, with, with these guys. I didn't know the guy. But there was those in, and they would want to do an intervention right. on the guy. They wanted to have an intervention. Like that's like that's how that's how bad he was. And I think they did do an intervention. He got straight for a little bit, and li- yeah. literally not much longer after that, he he ended up ended up passing away. I thought it was really sad how he yeah. when he um uh, he said he he did a thing. Where I don't know if it was an interview or or a blog or something, but he he like talked about like I don't I, you know too many guys have died, and I don't want to be one of the guys who died. And right. then it was. No, and I was just like, oh, yeah, horrible, right? I, I, never, I never knew the guy, but just, just, bro, that's the problem. These guys are pills. Yeah. Is these some of these guys, you know, everybody used to do somas, you know, but I was one of those guys that were just very consistent two somas, two beers, you know, after the match. I'd like, these guys were popping like six, seven, eight somas at a time, you know, and like, just and like, so I, get, I, I never, I never understood right. somas. But, but, but let me tell you this this, this is how this happens, okay? It's because these guys. Because of what we do for a living, okay, people just can't really comprehend this because unless you like wake up every day and say 2020, this, this is the equivalent of what we did, 20, 25 days a month, just, just go in your kitchen or go in your living room floor and just fall back on your back a few times. <laughs> Maybe you don't know how to fall, just like, you know, but, but that's sh- sh- stress on your, like, like we undergo a lot of physical stress, okay? So because guys are constantly aching, because we're constantly in physical, you know, you know, you hurt like you're you're not you're not injured, but you're just you ache. And guys would just medicate themselves. And unfortunately, the medication the guys take require you you get you get a uh, basically immune to it, and you have to take more and more. Right. And like that, and that's just how this stuff works. And the, and the thing is, is mm-hmm. these guys that bro, when you take these pills, they don't make you feel worse. They make you feel good. Right. So guys always, bro. The the the. I mean, I I, I hate to say this. Okay, but I hear people die in drug overdoses, and I'm like, if I don't die in my sleep, I'm you know anything that would cause like physical pain, I would rather not die that way. Like dying of a drug overdose would be like you know okay, I'm gonna feel good until my body can take and I die, you know, because that's what happens to these guys. Yeah, they're yeah. taking these pills, they're feeling better, they're taking too much, and the body can't handle all the pills, and they feel good, and the next thing you know, they, they just they go to seizure, and they, they die, sleep, and they don't wake well, up, and they don't wake I- up. And it's I like, you know, that's, that's what happens here. You know? I, think, I think the other thing I would add to that, because I've been close to it as well. Uh, and I've, you know, I've seen, I've seen some guys with, you know, some, some real issues. Right. The, the ones in my experience anyway, and I hate to, I, I never want to generalize or something like this, but the ones I've, the ones I've seen and the guys I've been close to who have had, who've had issues with pills are the ones who are, are also taking them to sort of mask emotional pain Mm -hmm. where it becomes, it's like, and sometimes the saddest part is when the emotional pain is being caused by the drug addiction, you know? So then it's like, it just becomes this kind of self exacerbating cycle. But, uh, I, I could, I'll say from, from, you know, my experience is that the, in England is, you know, in the UK, it's, uh, you can't get like, strong gimmicks you just you know the strongest thing you you know i don't mean i've 
the strongest thing I ever got uh, prescribed by a doctor in, in the UK was probably codeine, right? Um, and I remember the first time I had Vicodin, uh, I went, I was, it was, I had done, um, we had done a European tour with TNA. I think we'd, I think we'd started with, it was a brutal schedule. We, we'd had like a really weird, uh, we had, I think we had done like TV tapings in Orlando, then flown to Germany and we'd done like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and Ireland. It wasn't the UK. It was like the other part. We'd done like a separate European tour. Then flown back, then flown to LA to do Bound for Glory. And then I think flown to uh, Orlando to do one more, another set of tapings. And then, and then, I, and I, and, you know, I was just banged up, but I had the, but I got sick. I got the, you know, just from traveling, my immune system was worn down and stuff like that. So I just went to like a, a clinic, like a whatever. And I remember saying to this, you know, just seeing this doctor late and I just remember being like, look, I, you know, I told him what I did and I told him like, I've been, you know, this is, this has been my schedule the last like two weeks. And, you know, I've got this pay-per-view on the weekend and I, you know, and it's like, I just feel like, shit and I'm just like, I just need, you know, I was just wondering, I just need something to help me kind of get through this. And he was just like, okay, like, you know, the blah, blah, blah. And he, he, you know, he says, Oh, I'll, I'll give you some, you know, amoxicillin something whatever you know whatever and then he goes oh and uh, and then he like looks at me and i remember thinking like because i remember like not really understanding the uh the, the sort of the tone at the time and then thinking oh because he kind of looked at me like and i'll give you some vicodin for the pain and i kind of went oh uh thanks but it was like it wasn't like i'd gone in there go oh my back you know my knee like oh right. i kind of said oh i just feel like shit, you know and I realized like, oh, he's just used to wrestlers. And he was just like, he just assumed like, oh, he wants some pain. Yeah, pills. maybe. Yeah. I'd never had Vicodin before, you know. And uh, I I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time. She was actually there with me. And I remember being like a little bit wary. Like, I don't, you know, because obviously I'd, I'd heard so much. And I'd been around, and, and, you know, I'd been around Kurt and obviously seen, you know, like Kurt was not doing, you know, Kurt was not doing great at this point in time. And. Uh, I was I would end up driving Kurt around a lot, me and Davari. So I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. And then I was, but I did feel like shit too. So I was kind of like, okay, well, let me. And I took one, and you know, an hour later, I just remember like I remember my my girlfriend at the time looking at me and being like, how do you feel? And I went, holy shit. Mm. I was like, this is amazing. You know, I was like, and in you know, in one one you know one one pill, and I said, I said, I totally. Yeah, you see, you guys get addicted. I totally understand. Yeah. So yeah. I, was like, I totally understand like how it fortunately for me, I think by the time, you know, obviously by the time I've come along, uh, you know, it's the doctors are much more, much more cognizant about, you know, how easily they prescribe it. But having said that I've been prescribed Percocet, you know, a handful of times, oxycodone. When I, I tore my bicep in Mexico, Conan, I'll tell you that story. When I tore my bicep in Mexico, not trying to, you know, not trying to pat myself on the back here. Like, Oh, I'm a tough guy. You know, I'm not soft like my generation, but I, uh, I I taped I taped it up and finished the rest of the tour. I had a torn bicep, and like so. By the time you know, my doctor I went straight home and got surgery, and the doctor was just like, "Did you wrestle on this? You know, with this arm?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "You stupid mf'er! Like there was a hematoma in your arm, like the size of a golf ball. You you dumbass! Like you could have died." Or blah blah blah. Jesus. And I remember like, but you know, it hurt like hell. But it was like I had a big, huge jar of oxycodone so it was just like all right you know <laughs> work like they work you know right. fortunately for me uh i i was there i've never talked about this before i tried somas once i tried a soma one time someone gave me a soma in tna and i just i hated it I, it was awful i was just like i remember just laying there because it didn't well make, you gotta take it before you go to bed that's it the whole make, point well, i did glenn this is the thing but i just yeah. like i remember laying there and just like not i just you know, my mind was still alert, but my body didn't work. And I was just right. like, I, I don't want to feel like I'm paralyzed. This is, I just remember it's like, I won't say who it was who gave it to me, but I saw him the next day and was like, I never want one of those things again. I've never taken one. Since. It's brutal. <laughs> like, so I don't, I, I personally don't understand the, 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 the Somas thing, but yeah, the, the, you know, but with, yeah, Vikes and Perks and stuff, it's like, it's, yeah. it's easy to, it's easy to. Easy fall to into it. Yeah. yeah. 